All right, welcome everybody to the stream. Uh, hopefully, I haven't forgotten anything. I think everything seems to be working. Which is more than I can usually say. So, let's get this thing rolling, shall we? Uh, today we're going to be flying from uh, Stockholm to uh, Bergen. So we're going to be leaving, I want to say Sweden, and heading to Norway. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not good at geography. may have that backwards. But I'm pretty sure I don't. Yeah, we're leaving... We're leaving Sweden to Norway. And it looks like we've got some weather. That's going to be fun. Alright, so let's get this started, shall we? Uh, we're going to go from... We're going we're gonna to start our preliminary pre-flight procedures. And I can't get this to minimize. There it goes. Have a good flight. Thank you very much, Vipress. Uh, if you're here, it sounds like we may need to start some stream raiders. Does that sound correct to you? Uh, Alright, let me get some Stream Raiders going. Let's start with you. And I'm going to start with, let's say, a Centurion. Right here in the middle. All right. And let me know when uh, and the system will let me know when we're done. All right. Let's get chat up to make sure I can see what's going on. And let's get this thing started. Okay. Battery one and two can come on. Ground control recorder. External power on. Fuel pump should be all off. Fuel can be loaded now. So let's go to our Tolis plug-in loading performance. All right, let's take a look at our, I'm gonna lose chat here for a minute. We're gonna look at our current flight. Let's see, 67, 6.7 tons on our fuel today. And then what's our loading look like? 145 passengers. Which looks like maximum load. Uh, 100 kilograms. This gives us a zero fuel weight of 55.43. This one's to be 57.5. That looks pretty good. Load save load load settings. Save load settings. I'm not used to load save save load. I wrong direction, but okay. Uh okay, so let me throw chat back up here for a minute. Uh let's see. APU fire test. And that sounds like a positive test. APU master on. And I'll wait for the alert here on the ecam that the flap is open wait, wait wait apu battery start not available what why your batteries off there we go flap open apu start apu start there you go apu starto Let's turn up our lighting a bit. We're going to be leaving in fog and it's kind of dusk out. Let's go ahead and start aligning our deers also. Uh, okay, flaps lever should be fully retracted. Speed brakes retracted. Probe and window heat we don't need. APU bleed on as soon as it becomes available. Uh, air conditioning panel, no white. Generator, one air cross bleed auto. Pardon me, I skipped that. And then all white. Pack flow normal. AP bleed on. Uh, generator, one and two fault lights on. External power off. Other All other lights off. Ventilation, all lights off. And that is our preliminary pre-flight procedures completed. All right, so now we are 
on and aligning our adheres. Strobe lights can come on to auto. Yeah, okay. Wing lights, nav and logo, seat belt, uh, no smoking, and emergency exit lights. Uh, landing elevation should be set to auto, and our pack flow should be on normal. Be eh, no, let's actually set it to high because we got a lot of people, and it is quite humid out. Uh, fuel pumps can all come on. Let's get this bird in the air, shall we? Um, engine one and two fire test. Good engine one. Good engine two. And radios three. Two and one. And then we get to our McDo. So let's turn these up just a little bit. All right, and then here we go to data, init. Okay, so we are going from E S S E S S A to E N B R. Flight number today is gonna be. X9PD. All right, and our GPS monitor, we are at uh, 59393. Longitude 17564. Line IRS. What's our cost index today? It's like six. And our cruise flight level is going to be three, four, zero. Pull our climb winds. And we can do our flight plan. All right, today we are going from ESSA. We're departing. Runway two six. Ah, oh, this doesn't tell me my SID. You know what? I'm not going to use a SID. And then we're gonna direct to ours. And then from ours, whoa, 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 nope, back, back, back. At ours, we're going to go airways. We're going to jump on November 623 to Pezure. Then we are going to land at EMBR 17 Whiskey Arnav. Arnav 17. Let's look at this flight plan. Oh, that looks beautiful. Yeah. Let's do absolutely that. All right. Secondary initialization. Our zero fuel weight today. I'm gonna need my Tolis plug-in for this. Let's do a flaps one departure. And our zero fuel weight is going to be 57. 
Come on. 57.5 slash 28.9 for our center of gravity. Block fuel is going to be 6.7 tons. Performance V1, 145. V rotate 148 and V2 151. Sam's Angel, holy shit, 50% complete to the no hotus challenge. Oh no, I'm scared. Flaps is gonna be set to two slash up. Or no, one. One slash up 0.1. Flex temp is going to be 62. Everyone's favorite wifey is here. We do have stream raiders going, by the way. Uh, throw that out again so wifey can help. Flex temp, uh, perf, progress to EMBR. All right, that's our McDo set up. Go ahead and switch that to flight plan. Okay, altimeter should be set. What is our weather? Altimeter Q1010. Now, flight directors should both be on. Speed should be managed dashed. Heading will be in a few minutes. Our f cruise flight level is going to be 340 today. If I remember correctly, yes, 340. Uh, heading should be dashed here in three minutes. Uh, altitude is set. Anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel all norm. Squawk, we're going to set stupidly to VFR. We're going to turn it on. Beacon's going to come on, and then we're going to call for pushback. Uh, let's look at where we are exactly. that doesn't want to do it then we will look at it here in my tool okay so we need to come back tail right so better push back pre-plan push back Round cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Okay, let's go ahead and tell them we're ready. It'll take them a few minutes to get here and get us ready. Ground to cockpit, always driving up. This IRS will align in about one and a half minutes, one minute, somewhere in that ballpark. Oh, hey, interesting. We've got a different colored tug. <laughs> zombie fog. It's not quite zombie fog. It's just not good. <laughs> chat back up. Stop taking my chat. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to commit. Alright, so we're under a minute until IRS is aligned. Let's go ahead and start running since they're going to be detaching our chocks. Looks like we're aligned. Heading is dashed. 
So we are good to go. As soon as they tell us that uh, we can fire up our engines, that's exactly what we're going to do. We've got a little bit of weather on the way there, so um, that should be interesting. I'm going to go ahead and turn on our weather radar. Stall connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Parking brake release, sir. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. All right, so engine mode over to ignition. Starting engine two. I'm going to look for 21% and one rotation. By the way, guys, do feel free to poke me and say something if uh, I don't quite catch Dream Raiders being ready. Uh, I promise I do intend to run it. I just, uh, I might be busy the moment that it kicks off. Because it should be up here in, what, like 10, 15 minutes? I don't have my OBS up at the moment, so I can't really say for sure. Without possibly a little help. Looks like engine two is up. Let's start engine one. Oh. Ooh, this is some spicy soup. This is some miso soup is what this is. This is not ideal. I can see nothing. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Parking brake set, sir. Yeah, this is zombie fog. Stand by. Not kidding. This is bad. At least for what I'm used to. It's probably normal for the region. No, they haven't released me yet because I still got this nose wheel steering disconnected sign. Right goes to take off with a thick zombie fog. All of a sudden, a zombie runs across the runway. Signal on the right. We'll see you next time. Have signal on the right. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, there actually have been instances where something or someone has run out on the runway during a takeoff roll. Um, it would not be the first time. That's a good sign. All right, engines are both started. Let's switch back to normal. Uh, APU bleed off. Ground spoilers can be armed. Flaps set for takeoff, which is going to be flaps one. Pitch trim set for takeoff. That's going to be up one. Engine and wing anti-ice as required. It's not uh, APU master off. Nose wheel light set to taxi. And then we are going to release the parking brake. Run our elapsed time. And increase a little bit of throttle. Let's look at our brakes. Pressure looks good. We're looking right down here. Um, auto brake can be set to max. Um, light controls, full left, full right, full up, full down. 
All right, FMA should be at nav and climb. Auto brake is on max. Terrain on ND. And then let's make sure the cabin is ready. Quick, what I'm going to do once I get on this straightaway here is I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to play you guys our briefing as we taxi. Thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone, 
By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet to the seatbelt. Another big risk is drift cars. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drift cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why have an airline put some safety padding on the drift cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland, or your drink not being bland. Same goes for spilled fruit, coffee, and teapots, and cups of food. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airline takes this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20 percent fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight. Because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the valley, and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and in your chair. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you. Alright, and welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed our little briefing. Get takeoff taken care of. Do you want to rotate? Get 200 feet in the air. 400 feet, pardon me. Okay, AP1 on. And a gear up, ground spoilers disarmed. <clears throat> Nose wheel lights off. Runway turnoffs off. Throttle lever to the climb detent. Uh, let's see. Flaps retracted, but only when we're fast enough. I want to be fast enough. Uh, okay, so flaps are not retracted. We need another... Eh, 10 knots. Engine mode is normal. Engine anti-ice on at minus uh, at 10 or below. We are below, so let's turn on engine anti-ice. And then we come out of the humidity, so I get to turn it back off. Flaps retracted. Uh, landing lights will come off at 10,000 feet. Altitude... Uh, we're already set for cruise. We need to wait until we're 10,000 feet, and then we can turn off our landing lights. And then at 18,000, we can set our altimeter. Actually, I think it's 7,000 here. Um, Martin Flight, thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate it so much. Uh, we mostly do X-Plane here. I do have MFS. I just don't care for it yet. We need some study-level planes in it. Once we do, I'll be able to spend a little more time in that sim, but right now just everything crashes, the system crashes, the planes crash. There's just a lot of bugs, uh, a lot of autopilot errors. Um, yeah, it looks like it's about 5,000 feet. Set that to standard. 
And then at 10,000, we can turn off our landing lights, and we'll all be good. All right, and it looks like we've raised 26,000 channel points towards the No Bonus Challenge. I really, really don't want to do that, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Eventually, you guys are going to hit that, and uh, we are absolutely going to do that for you. Uh, 52%. It says 14 days left. Don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. I, I intend to continue extending the deadline until it, you know, gets met. We will be doing this challenge. So I, I know I sit here and I cringe every time I think about it because it's, it's very cringeworthy and I'm so, so scared. But we're going to do it anyway. We're going to fly with no HOTUS, no rudder pedals, nothing but keyboard, mouse, and a dream. One of these days. Hopefully a long, long time from now. 30 seconds till stream raiders. How fantastic is that? Because we are about to cross 10,000 feet, which means we will have no more to do until we reach cruise. So once we hit 10,000 feet, which we have, I'm going to go ahead and turn off our landing lights. And I'm going to turn off our seatbelts. And then we're going to run some stream raiders. All right, let me turn on Stream Raiders. And then we are gonna run this battle as soon as it, what, what are you doing? Stream Raiders, why? You were working a second ago. What, what, no? Oh, uh, come on. What, what? All right, there we go. Something, something was a little funky. Turn it back on. All right, here we go. Start battle. I have no idea why it decided to, to go a little wonky like that, but we're going to ignore that that ever happened. We are fighting the golden turkey, the golden turkey of Turks giving. And I'm pretty sure we're going to crush it because we're still on the very, very easy because we have so few people actually playing. Uh, yep, yeah, there it goes. It died, and it got stuffed. So, Wifey got that kill. And Wifey is going to get a three tank scrolls. Hell yeah. Alright, back to map. Let's see. Let's go... Let's go Northways. Alright, starting that battle. And then I'm going to place... With a mage. And I'm going to place it down here. All right, and then I'm gonna switch back so you guys can see crews. Not that there's a lot to see at crews. Let's go ahead and clear this GPS primary message. All right, so, oh, I did not stop. Okay, so 1356 minus 632. So roughly seven, eight minutes, seven and a half minutes of taxi time today. That's not too bad. I was going a little slow because I wanted to run out our uh, briefing, which I think I am gonna have to like adjust. I need to I need to make it a little louder. I think you guys will have to let me know, right? Tell tell me if you think that briefing was too quiet. Um, come on, buddy. Okay. There we go. Sorry, I had to get Stream Beats running again because Stream Beats is safe music. If you guys do any streaming of your own, Feel free to check out streambeats.com. It's all totally free. You get a mechanical sync license. You can synchronize it to YouTube, to Facebook Live, to you, uh, to, to Twitch. Um, and they last for as long as you have the, the license. Um, if you record a video and then somehow lose the license, which is would be magical for that to ever happen. The license itself provides for the videos that you have already created to be uh, safe forever. 
I just want to make that clear. So, like, if you make a, like, right now, I'm making a video. My video has uh, stream beats in it. Turn down my gain here a little bit. Actually, I'm going to minimize my gain. Holy shit, I may need to change my filters just, just a tad. Let me take a look at my filters. Actually, no, I'm not going to use my filters. I'm going to use my gain slider here to try and turn it down a little bit. And I think that looks a little better. I'm not redlining quite as much. Maybe I can turn my gain back up. <laughs> so I was sitting here turning my game up. Alright, so that should sound pretty good. Let me know how I sound, if I sound terrible, just like that. Um, but also, please let me know about the briefing, uh, how strong that was, uh, stream beats, and how loud it is. If it's too loud, let me know. I don't want to be overpowered by the sound of stream beats or of my simulator, which I'm going to turn down just a tad. Our environmental sounds seem to be killing it today. I just can't do anything with that. My environmental sounds just don't want to come down. So let's let's do it a little bit differently. Open my volume mixer and I'm gonna turn down X plane just a touch. There we go. Okay, guys, let me know how that sounds. Please, 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 I'm begging you. Um, so I need to know about stream beats, how loud it is. I need to know about uh, the briefing, how loud it was, how loud I currently am, how loud the plane currently is. So just let me know your feedback on all of the audio of the stream right now. Um, but yeah, if you're a streamer, check out stream beats, man. If uh, right now I'm making a video, this video has stream beats in it, that is covered by my mechanical license. When I go and I upload this video to YouTube, that will be covered by my mechanical license. If stream beats were to go down tomorrow and were to retract the mechanical license, I would not be able to stream a new video with uh, stream beats in it. I would not be able to upload this video to YouTube if I haven't done it already. However, if I had uploaded it today and they remove my license tomorrow, I can uh, I can leave all the videos that are already published up with the stream beats still in them. So that's kind of where I go with that. That's what I uh, got it for. Uh, it makes sure that my ass is covered 100%. And that is very, very important to me. Um... Because I don't want to get hit with these DMCA claims. And right now, those are enormous. They're getting, they're hitting everybody. And I just, I can't fuck with that. I can't do it. Right? Um, I'm not going to risk losing both my channels, and all of my social media, over playing some copyrighted music or material. Uh, not a significant amount anymore. Um, so like, playing music in the background? Oh no, that's not going to happen on this channel. Right? Like, I'll play music, but that music will have a mechanical license. I will have a sync license for any music I play. Um, including once I get there, once I'm making money off of the stream. Um, all that money is going to go back into the stream. So, like, if, if you're wanting to see more out of the stream, all you got to do is donate, subscribe, all that stuff. Bits. There's a soundboard down below the, the, the video where you can play. Uh, I do have a couple of sounds loaded. They're not too prevalent. There's not too many. Um, I've got to figure out more. Um... But once I do, they'll be going up down there. You can hit those buttons, and for a small fee of bits, you'll be able to play them on the stream. Da 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 da! Um, I'm sure most of you already know how those work, having been around Twitch for a bit of time. But uh, if you don't, 
just go down there, poke the thing. You can even preview it to make sure you know what you're playing so that you're not like, oh, that's not what I thought it was. No, preview it first. I don't want anybody getting wet feet. Uh, or cold feet, wet feet, wet hands, whatever it is. I, I don't know... I don't know phrases. <laughs> um, also, give me a second to, to sip from my G Fuel. We are not sponsored, uh, but we should be. Let me tell you something. I'm absolutely going to sell out. Uh, like, let me be clear. I will sell out in this in this stream. But it's not going to be like, I'm going to sell you guys out. I'm only going to sell me out, right? Like, I will only sponsor things that I consume. Like, I'm not going to come to you and say, G Fuel is amazing, and then, like, you know, think that it's garbage. No. I'm not going to come... Like, I, you'll never catch me here supporting G Fuel by saying Twisted Candy is good. Look, man, I don't like Twisted Candy. I, I, I got myself a G Fuel starter kit a couple of days ago, uh, uh, last week, and uh, it includes like five or six different trial flavors. I tried the Twisted Candy and it was uh, awful. I did not like it. So guess what? If we do get sponsored by G Fuel, uh, I will not tell you anything I don't believe, right? And I will tell my, any, spon any potential sponsors that day of, uh, first thing, because I'm not going to sacrifice my community for money right like that's that's really the bad kind of selling out um i'm not doing that i'm i'm just saying that i the intention long term of this project is at some point to start being able to fund itself which means it has to make money right so that means because i don't want to have to necessarily take all that money from you guys that means ad revenue, that means sponsorships, right? And that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna get those, 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 those ad revenues and those sponsorships, and that's how I pay for this without having to take money from you guys. Because I don't want to have to keep funneling my money, which is dwindling into the stream, in order to improve the, the stream quality for you guys. But somebody's got to pay for it. So I do have to sell out, and I hope you guys will understand that when I sell out, it's it's not going to be at your expense. It's not going to be a bad thing, right? Like, people say it like it's a bad thing. And sell out is not a, is not a bad word. It's just, you got to be careful how you do it. You can't throw away your people. You can't throw away your audience. And that's not what I'm going to do. I just want you guys aware of that off the muscle. Um, that is not a thing I'm ever going to do. Um, however, speaking of selling out, we're about 45 minutes, 50 minutes into the stream. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this over to this view so that you guys can see some of this beautiful cloudage. Uh, I wish it looked better, but I don't have active sky or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to throw it to that. I'm going to go and be right back. I'm going to grab some water, stretch my legs, and then we'll be back. Um, we'll still have a little bit left on Stream Raiders, but I'm going to be gone maybe about five minutes. So I'm going to throw you guys up a timer, if I can find my timer, uh, break timer, there we are. start my timer 
and we will be right back. Thank you guys so much for being here.
Alright, and I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, I kind of missed my cue very slightly because uh, I forgot that my mic was muted. <laughs> I just sat back down and was like, oh, okay, and we're back. Oh, I'm muted. Unmute. <laughs> Alright, so where are we at right now? Um, hopefully you guys have like a really smooth... Um, I'm hoping for a buttery smooth stream. So far we have zero drop frames, which I'm very, very happy with over the course of a 55 minute stream so far. Um, our CPU is not dying like it was last time. So um, to let you guys know behind the scenes, right? This is, this is some stuff about me streaming that I don't often talk about outside of, uh, you know, inner circle with friends that help me to, to stream properly. So, you might have noticed recently that I have a very different layout, right? I've got this animated background and all these frames and everything. Uh, there's, there's little light sweeps going everywhere, and it's, it's, it's all on different timers. I mean, all very, very cool, I think. Uh, but I would think because, you know, I'm the person who made them. <clears throat> these are all assets that I made myself. Now, the problem with that is... I'm not a professional. Um, I know basically what I'm doing, but that's that's let's let's keep that on the download, like because I I don't know what I'm doing, know what I'm doing. I I have an idea what I'm doing. I I'm learning. Um, where is our topic set? I want to make sure I don't miss it. Ooh, okay, way up there. Um, so anyway, uh, we so I made these all myself, and when I first made them, I exported them as uh, AVIs because I needed the transparency. Unfortunately, this meant that like just a little piece that has the border that goes around the game, and and that from time to time sweeps a little piece of light across of it. That was like a four and a half gig file. Four and a half gigabytes for just a 20 second loop of this light sweep going across the, the, the frame. And the background image, which is like 2.4 seconds long of this swirl pattern, right? That's... I, 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 that was, I want to say, like, 1.03 gigs. Like, when you added together all of the data being used just by my overlay, you were in the ballpark of, like, six to, six to eight gigs of data streaming through my OBS. Um, and that's before you start playing a game. That's before you start Stream Raiders. That's before anything. Like, that's all stuff that has to be loaded into RAM. And it was killing my frames. Um, my stream was going so slow, but you can see now, like I'm, I'm at a buttery 45 to 50 FPS on on my simulator. Uh, the stream itself is 60 FPS, which is why I had to restart the stream in the first five minutes. Uh, you guys may have noticed that uh, I started streaming, then about a minute later I went offline and then came back. That's because for some reason my streaming software was trying to stream at 30 FPS. Uh, I don't know why it did that, but you know, we're back to 60. So, the, the, the stream is running at a buttery 60 FPS. My simulator is running at 45 to 50, which is optimal for X-Plane. Uh, everything is running pretty smoothly. I really should look at my task manager to see what kind of uh, resource utilization we're looking at um, yeah my I'm, I'm looking pretty good my CPU usage is staying steady at about 60% memory usage is about 40% disk usage 1% network 1% GPU 45% and everything's holding pretty steady if anything it's dropping so what I did was I downloaded an encoder for WebM's which is an HTML5 compliant video 
format that supports transparency. It's the only one that I know of except for AVI that can do it. Um, that, that, that can do transparency. So I have that set up now. So like if I were to hide my game, uh, let me just, you can see that there's stuff behind there, right? And that's going on in real time in sync because I'm able to put this border transparent. Uh, actually, I just screwed that up. I shouldn't have, <laughs> I shouldn't have hit the border. Uh, so I can just hide the window capture. Right? And so you can still see that that border is still there. It's still running. It's still good. Um, let me re, re show the window capture. Uh, but yeah, so that was kind of the issue, right? Is that in order to have those capabilities, because sometimes... Uh, so my, my left monitor is 16 by 9, which is what most people have, right? Um... That's your 1920 by 1080. Well, my right monitor is 16 to 10 ratio. So it's like 1680 by something weird. I don't even know. Uh, let, me, let me grab the information. 1680 by 1050, which is super weird. And it makes it so that I wind up having to have... Um, I wind up having to shrink my stream or change the resolution of the game that I'm playing or play it on my left monitor, which is very, very uncomfortable, especially since all of my controls are aimed forward towards my first monitor. Um, so, with X-Plane, what I've done is I've changed the resolution of X-Plane. Uh, if you guys ever want to see how janky my system looks uh, to me, I'd be happy to post it for you. But, like, uh, I have a strip at the bottom of my screen where my, my taskbar and my desktop and everything still show behind the, the game because about the last inch and a half, inch to inch and a half of my monitor does not have any game on it. <laughs> and it looks really silly. Guys, it, it just, it looks really silly. Um, and, and, uh, it drives me crazy, but I do it because I love you guys, and I want you guys to see absolutely everything. But, um, hopefully it helps because it fills up that whole space, but when I do something like uh, my Mega Man X playthroughs, I can't do that. Um, I can't do that because the, um, the game is just not sophisticated enough. It doesn't have controls to allow me to adjust its its resolution independent of the monitor's size. Even in windowed mode, which makes absolutely no sense. Um, it's still locked to the 16 by 10 ratio unless I switch it to my right monitor, and I really don't want to do that. Um, so, I'm kind of stuck dealing with that on the Mega Man, but that means that I have this open gap between the left and right sides of my game and the left and right sides of my chat board. Or my, not my chat board, my game board. So I didn't want that to be filled with blackness or whatever, so I had to make that border transparent. Well, WebMs are new and they support transparency, but AVI is the only other thing that I had the option of, uh, and I had to download an encoder for WebMs, so um, obviously the first thing I made was an AVI, but AVIs are terrible at compression. But now that I have it in a WebM format, it's somewhere like 200 megs, as opposed to 4.5 gigs. That is a lot of data compression. That is being much, much, much more realistic with, with, with my storage capacity. Um, and that makes me much, much happier as a streamer because it allows me to still stream this game in this fidelity at 60 frames at 1080p 
with no no frame no frames dropped no no lagging in the encoder nothing like everything is just work and I love it the thing that confuses me is for some reason my OBS so I've set it to a frame rate or to a uh, bit rate maximum of 6,000 frame uh, 6,000 kilobits and it's sitting here going, oh, it's 6,024, 6,238, uh, there's 5989, that's good. 6180, 6494, I'm like, how are you hitting 6500 when I put you at a limit of 6,000? Like, do you not understand the word limit? <laughs> if anybody knows anything about Streamlabs or, or, pardon me, OBS, and can explain that to me or tell me how to fix it, please let me know because I'm pretty sure Twitch has a hard limit of 6,000. Um, maybe that means I just need to put like 5,500 or 5,000 so that it will max out at six. I don't know for sure. But yeah, so... By the way, this is our livery. This is specifically for this stream. I made this myself. If you want access to this, you can either subscribe to Patreon or Subscribestar. Uh, there should be links to that in the panels, I want to say. If not, I may need to make something that does that. Or there may be a command here. There's Patreon. Looks like I do not have a subscribe star link. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but right now, both of them are working just fine. So, um, there's, there's not really a functional difference between them from my perspective. So, feel free to use Patreon if you want. Um, I will get the link to subscribe star uh, if you prefer to use that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sounds like we have a fight ready. Let me grab my OBS. I'm still not used to the new OBS. <laughs> I've been using Streamlabs OBS for the longest time. Now I have to switch and be more used to this. Good that much. Close enough. Fuck it. Okay. Let's start this battle, folks. I'm I'm absolutely certain we are gonna crush this. Oh, we we already have a kill and assist. Two kills, one assist. We have no deaths on our side. That's definitely the direction we want to go. Oh, two deaths. Two deaths from Sam's Angel. All right, Pog Champs in chat. Uh, open the chest, and it looks like somebody's going to be getting one Barbarian. Okay, sorry guys, I thought I was gonna sneeze there and I didn't wanna blow anybody's eardrums out. So it looks like Sam's Angel got 15 coins, Vipress got one Barbarian Scroll, and everybody gets five coins. Go ahead and start the next one. Uh, this is going to be easy, a horde of oversized baddie. All right, let's get this started, and I'm going to place, place a bomber. I'm going to place it down here. I think it'd be smart to kind of start down here at the bottom so that we're not splitting our attention everywhere. Alright, now let's transition back to us at Cruise. I want to take a look at our map here. Okay, so we're getting kind of close to our 
top of the set. Let's take a look at Bergen. Um, you guys aren't going to be listening. Current flight 58% done. Oh, that reminds me. I should have. Looks like we're about 70 nautical miles away from our top of the scent. We look at our flight. Okay, I'm not sure why this is an issue. about the flight progress tracker for the moment, but we're going to look at Bergen. Uh, elevation is going to be 166 feet, transition altitude is going to be 7,000 feet. Um, heading is going to be straight up 170, we're landing on 170. Um, looks like it is at least ILS category 1, with a 3 degree glide slope. Uh, length is going to be 9,810. Enter destination data. It really wants that stuff. Okay, let's let's get going. Um, start out by looking at wind. Sent wind. It is not ready for. All right, performance. We go to approach. Okay, we're gonna open it here because it's wanting to be a pain in the ass. Okay, let's look at our thing here so we can pull actual sim data. And that's going to be QNH 1002. Temperature is going to be 10 degrees. Winds are going to be 200 at 21 knots. The 
and Hell of a Crosswind. NDA, let's go 200. This is going to be a wet runway, I think. Scattered at 9, broken at 12. Winds at 1,200 feet. 127 gusting, 43 knots. Good God. I hope we're able to land. At all. Okay. to auto. <clears throat> Big do arrivals is completed. Performance approach is completed. Top of descent winds will be at about 15 to 20 PME to our top of descent. We're going to have 17. Lap attractions are going to be at 207, 187, and we'll board. I think that's only on takeoff. Um, I'm sitting here overthinking things. Line wind, cruise wind, we need to send that. Hey, perfect. Alright, progress page, and we can get going. So we're going to come down to. Uh, what do we choose for our approach? RNAV 17. See this Gilva Bablu Meba. There's Galvin. There's
go from Jungla to Nepal. Babylon at 3,200 is where we'll intercept the uh, light slope. So that's how that's going to work. Okay. And then I know what we're doing. Make sure I'm not missing anything, guys. I apologize if I do. But I'm just trying to get us set up for our uh, approach. Okay, so top of descent winds is, is done. FCU altimeter set and altitude set and push done. Uh, speed brake half as required. Shouldn't be required, but if it is, we can always pull it. Um. Landing lights will come on at 10,000 feet. ND data we can go ahead and turn on to constraints. On airports over here. Um, okay, throttle is to idle. Uh, I do right now. is 109.9. Let's see, is that going to be... 109.9. Perfect. all of our descent procedures. Now we just basically monitor our way down. As we approach these clouds here, definitely going to have to turn on some anti-ice. Not sure why my... Weather radar isn't showing anything. Do not have it set properly. I really don't do not like the winds I'm gonna be looking at coming into Bergen. Looks like we are slightly below our descent path, which is fine. I'm happy with that. And it's why our engines are not at idle at the moment. Very smooth. We do have some fairly close MDAs. Um, like our our minimum sector altitude for uh, valve after valve is uh, two 
2,300 feet. And we're going to be intercepting at 2,400. We're only 120 feet from our minimum altitude, sector altitude. So I think I've, I've briefed myself pretty well on how this is going to run. We will need to be maximum 220 knots at Yilba. And 200 at Bablu. Which I think it'll probably show in here. Really hard to tell. Basically, here at pressure, we start to, uh, we're starting on our arrival. What's our time of life? Got already in 11 minutes. It looks like these clouds just keep getting lower. <laughs> I don't know if it's just having, uh, having some, you know, being kind to me or what, but... Our gross weight 61,400 kilograms. Uh, our max landing weight. Which I think I've got that on my sheet here. Max landing weight 61,000 kilograms. We need to burn another 400 kilograms of fuel, which should not be a problem. seconds. Now we are on our arrival. Still on descent. Hopefully, we'll be able to get this stream raiders in before we land.
All right, speed should be managed. Speed brake as required, which it's not. Flaps one will be when we hit 230 knots, and not a moment before. Um, FC approach will be armed when ILS is tuned. Uh, approach will then switch to one. Uh, autopilot will be set to one and two. Uh, when the localizer and glide slope are both captured, uh, we can set our go around. Flaps 2 will be at 200 knots, landing gear down after 2,000 feet. Uh, ground spoilers will then be armed, auto brake as required. Flaps 3 will be at 185. Uh, looks like we've got pretty much everything else we can do right now is already set. So this is the point, ladies and gentlemen, where I would remind you that as we come in to land at Bergen Airport, um, we are not responsible for any injuries that might be caused during the course of landing. Uh, if you manage to jam your spine or anything, it's probably because you didn't pay attention to the briefings when we told you to, uh, as we land, bend over, put your hands between your knees, put your head between your knees, your hands on the back of your neck, kiss your ass goodbye, because we may or may not be landing um, reasonably. This may be a Ryanair landing. This may be a Lionair landing. We're not entirely sure. Uh, so we're going to do our best. And hopefully everyone can arrive alive today. Uh, however, if you don't, we will not be paying out a single dime. Uh, not even digital currency because we're allowed to do that. Not sure why we're allowed to do that, but you know what? I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. It might have something to do with money paid to the government, but that, that's beside the point. Um, I don't have to admit that, but guess what? When the government's in your pocket, you don't have to worry about that. Sorry about that. The snap top of hydration and energy. Not quite the squeak of hydration, but it's out there. We'll be heading onto our Arnav here in a moment. About 12 miles away. What do we have left on Street Raiders? Looks like five minutes. going to make this little arc here at 220 knots at about 8,000 feet and then we're going to come down to Gilva, juke over and then we're going to intercept at 2,400 feet and what are you doing? Ebon. Oh, after Gilva it's after Bablu is here before Mebod. And this is saying that we need to be at 2,500 plus at Mebod. That should definitely not be true because we need to be at 2,400 to intercept the glide slope. Unless Mebod is just so close that it's before the intercept of the glide slope. That's possible. I'm not sure why this arc doesn't go all the way down to Bablu, but it don't. It sure don't. So we got about four minutes left on Stream Raiders.
level off at 8,000 and start coming around this, uh, this circle. It's going to be a hard right bank. And now we're limited to 6,000. 220 knots, so we're doing well there, which means we need to flaps one. You can see these slats having come forward. They don't exactly intersect with the uh, body anymore, with the fuselage, wing box. We're just going to kind of constantly glide over to the left now, We're getting some pretty strong crosswind. Liking that. Okay, FCU AP one and two after ILS is, is tuned. This is the part where I start not being sure of myself, so uh, for those of you who have been around flight simulation for a while, know that uh, I've been doing this for a while, but I'm not great at it. Um, I'm not super familiar with it yet. I do kind of know the steps, uh, but these approaches are all new to me. Um, so the my unfamiliarity with the approaches kind of makes me start second-guessing my procedures. So if you catch me doing something wrong, please tell me. Um, I want to learn. And I can't do that if I keep thinking I already know everything. We're at 43 seconds. Get in your last... Uh, your last units placed on the field we're going to start this probably uh, right after we pass what is that Bravo Romeo 621 17, 16, 15 14, 13 12, 11 10, 9 8, 7 6, 5 4 Three, two, one, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get through this battle. Hopefully, we will knock the crap out of this. I feel like somebody's got a. Is, is that a goose? What is that? That's a rogue of some sort? Nice. And right, somebody gets a healer scroll gonna be Sam's Angel thank you so much uh, I'm actually not gonna start another one today because uh, we're just about to land so that's gonna be it for stream Raiders today maybe we'll do more tomorrow when we're back here for Mega Man X4 hopefully the end of the zero stages and maybe start on uh, X playthrough of the same uh, game all right, so ILS. Uh, go ahead and turn on approach mode. LS on.
I think we're still a bit far out for that, but... One can hope, one can hope. Great, 109.9, 21 nautical miles, so it is tuned. where we're going to intercept the glide slope. And these constraints will stop the airplane from descending too soon. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to flaps too yet. I'm going to wait until after the localizer and glide slope are both captured. Well, there's the glide slope, and there's the localizer. So we are tuned, and we are receiving. We got all four signals telling us where we need to be. Try and come down to 4,000 feet by Gilva, 3,000 by Bablu, and then down to 2,400 to intercept the glide slope. The throttle is at idle. That's perfect. I love seeing that. It means that we have calculated our descent perfectly, or at least the plane has. Go ahead and turn on both autopilots. Looks like we're starting to get some fog going on. Let's start our anti-ice going. I would not have expected this. We are frosting over pretty badly be fine by the time we're on final. Turn left. And we're going to be straight in. There's our runway. Looks like we're going to have perfect visibility as we come down. Just some really nasty winds. Switch our engine mode over to ignition as we land because the runway may be wet. We're going to fly through this cloud here. Okay. Go ahead and turn on our lights.
intercept. That'll go to go around 2,000 feet. I'm going to drop my gear. Right, and it looks like we are capturing the glide slow. Either that or we're just descending very close to it. that glide slope on our way down. Let's drop our gear. Perhaps two. Oh dear. Okay. Well, let's try and take this over ourselves. Seven zero. All right, let's try this again. Ever, ever be afraid to do a go around. I'm not sure why our anti ice doesn't seem to be working at all. Um, showing anti ice or er, ice not detected. I'm definitely having issues on the windshield. Thank you. 
pressure. Ten thousand. Let's again, 10,000 fucking feet. Why, why are you, why are you having issues? Olus. What's going on? Did somebody hurt you? Thousand, and we can drop back down to three. So our gear is back up and locked. Plane, why do you do this to me? You had locked the altitude. Make sure you get to the actual altitude. Then you stop whining and bitching. And the level change was not on. Make sure it locks in at 10,000. Lock in, lock in. 
10,000. 10,000. 10,000. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. I believe. I believe in you. Let's go ahead and go down to 8,000. Putting on my level change dot, there's supposed to be a dot right here that shows up when it's actually changing the altitude. It is not doing that thing. Point, I could probably direct Gilda. See what is what is this saying is my Okay, so it does have the whole thing. Okay, so we're going to hold at 8,000. I'm going to wait for it to lock in because it's being finicky today. Being a little pain in the butt. 8,000. It appears to be locked in. Let's wait for the vertical speed to change to zero. Change it down to 6,000. Hopefully it won't have a shit fit. Good, good, good. It's just holding. Now, worst case, if, if, if I can't nail this, uh, next time I will turn off the weather. But I really don't want to do that. I want to be good enough to handle it with the weather. Right now, I'm not, but... is I'm under by 5,000 feet. No. <laughs> I'm supposed to be anywhere between 13,000 and 8,000. I'm at 8,000. I'm fine. 
It wasn't going to go all the way up to 13,000 for uh, pressure. Don't worry, we'll, we'll catch back up. It'll stop screaming VDEV at me. For those of you who don't know, that stands for vertical deviation. It means that I am not on my descent path, which I wouldn't be if I had come from a cruise, but I'm not coming from cruise, I'm coming from a go-around, which means, you know, 3,000 feet instead of 34,000 feet. go ahead and leave myself without flaps for a little longer because I want to go a little faster and I'm not limited to 220 knots I'm under by I'm at, sitting at about 208 um, I'm sitting at about 208 so I should be good on speed basically tell Gilman was the first time that we have to reduce below 220. And I want to kind of... I do kind of want to be at that. Okay. Six thousand. We're going to take our time with that descent, but we are going to get down to six thousand. sure why I'm having so much trouble with heat. My windshields are just really having a bad time with it. Time we'll be able to nail it. Uh, next time, I think I'm going to direct to Bravo Romeo 64 rather than going all the way back to pressure. Or I might even just uh, direct back to Build It. Bilba. Bilba might be my direct to next time turn right 90 degrees, or turn left 90 degrees, and then direct Gilva. I'm up to 4,000 instead of 3,000.
good news is we are well below our maximum landing weight. Bad news is we've only got four. We've only got uh, twenty-six thousand or twenty two thousand six two point six tons of fuel. We're currently using a total. Twelve hundred an hour. So if we we only have two more go arounds before we have. To we had uh, five degrees C. This fogging should not be this bad. Anti ice on. We're turning into our circle. We're going to keep going at this speed for a while. I, I don't want to slow down. Um, I want to slow down close to the runway, not now. And if I, I go ahead and throw out my flaps, then the uh, the plane's going to want to slow down a lot. And right now, I wanted it too tall. Of course, we're flying with a twenty with a thirty four knot tailwind, so that may not be the smartest decision I've ever made. But we're going to go with it. this time please don't fuck up the approach oh i don't know what got me so far off i was being stupid or more correctly i don't remember i'll have to i have to look at the footage when i'm doing post-production on it for youtube because yes by the way i'm doing a youtube for everyone um my last video was for Mega Man x2 and before that was the 787 Dreamliner flight that we botched so miserably. I think I'm gonna wait until basically Gilva to throw out my first notch of uh, flaps. Some stunningly beautiful scenery, though. And there's, it's not completely covered by fog and clouds. Possibly cut the stream early. We'll see.
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna give one more try at this. Hopefully, we're not gonna lose the footage. Yes. Why did you lose all of my settings? Yes, why did you lose all of my settings? Oh, I can't do this. Oh dear God. Um, okay, we're gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. I'm gonna have to stop recording because it's about to kill my processor, my, my storage. maintenance while I'm on the fly and this is this is very very not good this is very very bad doesn't kill my stream. You go down to 2000 or 4000. Fuck, 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 fuck. Go down to straight 2400. Go. Uh, let me look at OPS and hope that this isn't killing things. Guys, I am so sorry. This is everything it could possibly go wrong going wrong at once because OBS doesn't listen. <laughs> so I got down to about 54 megs of space on my C drive, which is my Windows drive. <laughs> because uh, for some reason, OBS thought it needs to be recording onto the C drive when I told it to record onto my D drive, which is my deep storage drive. Ah. <sighs> Now I've lost that th this footage as being native, and I'm gonna have to download it from Twitch, which is going to screw everything up. Ah, uh, okay. Let's throw out some spoilers, some speed break. Need to get down. All of my data here. Oh boy. This is not good. I do not like this. Okay, let's turn on approach mode. AP1, AP2. Go ahead and flaps one. Up 
Phillips too. A straight headwind almost 26 knots not bad I may have just lost a lot of Okay, flaps are fully out. Go ahead and drop gear. Uh, spoilers are armed. Auto brake as required on medium. Uh, flap three is already out. Ecam all green. Cabin check. Throttle is on. Nose wheel light is on to taxi. Yes. Everything else lit up like a Christmas tree. Ecam no blue. All right, and we're on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bergen. All right, let's get this thing on the ground so that preferably 
all the things can stop going bad. Wait, is that how supposed to go in there? Yes, it is. chugging so bad. Alright, let me set my parking brake. Alright, let's start turning off our lights because we don't need everything on anymore. Drop frames. Hey, that's good. Okay, so let's clean up a little bit. Oh wow! Landing lights retract. Ground spoilers disarmed. Engine mode normal. Flaps retracted. APU master on. APU start. Terrain on ND off. Brake fin on if necessary. And it looks like it is absolutely not necessary. Uh, parking, parking brake pressure check green, park brake on, anti-ice off, AP bleed on, engine one and two master off, uh, wing lights, nose wheel lights, seat belts, I'm just going to turn everything off. Okay, elapsed time, stop. On. There we go. Alright, fuel pumps off. Transponder to standby. Two's dim, I'm not gonna worry about that. Brake fans off, which it already is. Park brake on, it ears off. Exterior lights all off, APU bleed off. First exit lights off, no smoking off. And batteries off. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I apologize for like every fucking thing possible going wrong. Uh, that was not what I had in mind, but guess what? It's what happened today. Um, so we had to go around. We had OBS fuck everything up. Hopefully that won't happen next time. But thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you guys tomorrow for some Mega Man X4. We will be wrapping up zero, hopefully, if I don't suck at the game. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye, everybody.